What's going on engineers? In this next video in the Let's Learn Rust series, we're going to be looking at Rust enumerated types as well as simple matching with the match keyword. For those new to enums, they're nothing more than custom types with predefined variants or values. And the match keyword is kind of like a really fancy switch statement, but more on that later. So let's jump in and see what we have going on here. An enum consists of two parts. It consists of the type and then the variants. To make a new enum, you simply use the enum keyword, specify the type, and then use curly braces. Inside the curly braces is where you would define the variant. So for color, some logical variants might be red, you know, green, and then some others. Now, even though you can't see it, each one of these does have a value internally. It starts at zero and then goes up from there. So in this case, red is zero, green is one, and so on. We can easily check this by casting one of these variants as a 32-bit integer and then printing it out. So to reference an enum variant, you type the type, you do double colon, and then you type the one that you want to output. And then in this case, if I want to cast it to a 32-bit integer, I can do as i32. Now, when we come over here and we run cargo run, we can see as expected, this outputs a one. Now, if it makes sense for your program, you can define specific values for your enum. So if we do enum say number, and then we do like one, we can do equals, equals one, you know, five equals five. The other thing we can do is we can actually even use hexadecimal if you wanted to. So like zero x a. And then we can check to make sure these have the same values in the same ways we did above. So we'll just output each of these items, do cargo run. We can see it does 1, 5, 10, which is what we expect to happen because we got 1, 5, and 10 here. Now what we defined here is a simple enum with simple values, but we can also use structs as variants. To do a tuple struct, write the variant name. So we'll say like custom and then write the type inside parentheses. To do a classic or C style struct, again, type the type name and then specify the struct properties. You'll notice now the Rust compiler is complaining about this line, and that's because once we added struct variants, it means that not all of these are primitive types, like this is 0, 1, 2, 3, but this is not. So that means that you can no longer cast to an integer because it can't cast custom string to an integer. So we'll just delete this out for now. Assigning an enum variant to a variable is no different than anything else. We use the let keyword, so we can do something like let favorite colon, specify the type, which will be color equals color, colon, colon, green. If we want to assign using the custom color, it's almost the same. We do custom, type as color, equals color, colon, colon, custom. And then inside here, we specify the string of the color. So we'll do pink. And remember, that's a string slice. So we gotta do two string, which will convert that to a heap allocated string. There's a few different ways to check if a variable is a specific enum variant. The two ways we're going to talk about is with if let, and then the second is going to be with match. The syntax for checking with if let, and it's sort of weird, it's going to be if let, and then you specify the actual enum variant. So we'll do color, color, green. And then we use one equal sign, and then I'm going to check it against favorite. And then if that's a match, I'm going to write favorite color is green. It's worth mentioning that let color green equals favorite is not the same as let favorite equals color green. If you do it in reverse, what you're doing is you're assigning the enum to the variable and it's not going to do what you expect it to. Whereas if you do it this way, it's a comparison. The if let option is a good option if you just want to check one variant against one variable. And just to make sure this works so far, we'll run our code and we can see it says favorite color is green just as we expect. Now next we're going to use is match and I'm going to do a video that contains a lot more on match because it's a very powerful keyword. We're going to be using it very basic here. To write a match statement, start by writing match and then the variable you want to match against and then curly braces. Now each case or leg inside the match statement is in the format of pattern fat arrow statement. So if I wanted to do something, if favorite is of variant color green, I can do color green, fat arrow, and then whatever I want to do. So in this case, print favorite color is green. The same thing is true if I wanted to do blue. I can just copy that, do blue, and then change that to blue. And this will match green and blue. Now you'll notice that the Rust compiler is complaining here. And the problem is that when you use the match keyword, one of the requirements is that you match against all possible values. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you have to list out every single variant inside your match statement. It just means that you have to handle each variant that you want some specific logic for. And if you have some default logic that you want to run, all you have to do is do underscore fat arrow, and then you can just do an empty statement. Now notice that I use curly braces here. You can use curly braces anywhere. It doesn't have to be one single line. Like if I wanted to convert green to a statement block, you know, I could, I could have it print three times if I wanted to. This is just to say that code to execute upon match can be any number of lines. But what we're really saying here is output something if it's green, output something if it's blue, or just do nothing. 
Now remember our custom color? Now matching that is similar. We can do match custom, and then here we do color custom, and then the cool thing here is that we can actually get access to the color that was submitted in that variant, and then we use our fat arrow, and then we can actually print out that color if we wanted to. And again, it's gonna complain, so we have to do our default leg here, that way everything's good, that way we've covered all options. So let's run our program and make sure we're getting what we expect to get. So we get favorite color is green and then custom color pink. And those are both what we want. So everything's good so far. And again, the match keyword does way more stuff than you see here. And we'll be talking about that in a later video. The last thing we're gonna talk about is a built-in enum called option, which plays a very important role in Rust. One thing Rust doesn't have is null values. And this is where options can really help us out. The option enum looks something like this. It has two variants. One is sum, which contains some type, and then one is none. So the way this is helpful is imagine we have a variable called age, and we will set that of type option i32, and then imagine that we don't actually know what a person's age is so far, so we want to just set this to none to start. And then maybe later in your program you do some, you know, do some processing that will figure out what the age is, and then when you go to set the age, you can do age equals sum, you can set it to a different variant, and then inside there, you can put their age, call it 18. The compiler is complaining that it's not mutable, so I'll do uh, let mute, and that will solve that. So just like above, we'll use the match keyword again to process the different variations of age. So we can do match age, and then there's gonna be two things we have to process here. The first is gonna be sum, and then it'll be the age. We'll put a little block there for now. And then the last one's gonna be none, and then that one we can simply just do unknown age. Now notice that the compiler is not complaining that I didn't do a default leg, and that's because I've already covered all the possible variants of the enum option. Because there's only two, some and none, and I've covered both of them, I don't have to do anything additional. So inside here, you can do whatever you want with age. In this case, age is gonna be equal to 18, so maybe we could just see if the person's old enough to drink. So we can do like age greater than or equal to 21. In this case, we can say, you know, can have beer. And then of course the else statement will be, you know, can't have beer only, and then specify the age. So let's run our program and make sure it works. So it looks good, can't have beer, only 18. And we're done. And that's all there is for enumerated types. There's a lot more to the match keyword, but we'll get to that at some other point. As always, if you have any questions or comments about this video, leave it below in the comments. Other than that, hope to see you in the next video. Take care.